Good morning, Kelsey Church. Good to see you all this morning. Uh, so good to be able to be in worship together as the body of Christ. I'm glad that we can join together in worship and fellowship and in unity uh, that the Spirit creates within our hearts. Amen. Uh, we gather in the name of Jesus Christ to worship and we light the Christ candles as a way for us to remember the light of Christ that is shining within us all. Before we actually get started to see the names I have, see Olga. Good morning, Olga. Chuck. And his mom are worshiping. Good morning, guys. Debbie's there. Good morning, Debbie. I see Gloria. Good morning, Gloria. Uh, and the other Fletchers. I see the Alegrias from Tennessee. Mary, uh, Pam, Tracy, John. Good to see you all. Glad to you're all here. And as everyone else begins to come in, if you'll help me welcome them and, and give thanks to God for their life as well. Uh, as we and Joseph, I just saw Joseph's name pop up. Good morning, Joseph. Good to see you all. Praise God. Let's join in this morning's call to worship. Oh, I lost the candles. That's all right. They're still there. I'll be the leader. You be the people, shall we? Open your hearts to God's loving mercy. Lord, come into our hearts this day. Having received God's mercy, bring that love to others. Lord, be with us as we reach out to others in compassion. Feel your spirits filled with the goodness of God. Lord, we thank you for the many blessings which you pour into our lives. Amen. And would you join me in this morning's opening prayer, sisters and brothers? As we sing our praise to you, O Lord, we remember the multitude of blessings you have given us. We are mindful of the ways in which you have lifted us when we have fallen low. Be with us this day as we gather to hear your word for our lives. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. church i'm glad that god had lead, led us together god has led us 
us together to be in worship with one another. Amen. A couple of names popped up. Brother Emilio is is uh, worshiping with us from Doctors Regional, and Lizette is there with him. So we give thanks to God, and I see Irene watching. I'm sure Roy's there too. So praise God. We give thanks to God for the church gathering in Jesus' name to worship. Uh, we welcome each one of you, uh, whether you are a longtime member of Kelsey or whether this is your first time worshiping with us or ever hearing about us. Maybe you're just there on Facebook and you happen to see something that caught your eye that you tuned in. We're glad you did. We're glad you're a part of our worship this morning. We want to encourage all of you that as we go through our worship to make these comments keep going. All right. Let's see what you want to pray for. Let's see what you're lifting up. If, you know, I'm slowing down on the sermon and getting low, maybe you can give me a good amen, pet me up again. If there's anything you want to tell the church as we worship or anything you want to tell God that you, as we worship, uh, use the comments to do so. That way we can uh, share in this worship together in, in meaningful ways. Uh, sisters and brothers, I'm going to read to you uh, from Philippians chapter one and encourage you to hear the word of God with an open heart so that God's spirit might speak his truth to our heart this morning. Philippians chapter one. The Apostle Paul says, for to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor labor for me. And I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy and faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had and now hear that I still have. Sisters and brothers, this is God's holy word spoken to God's holy people. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. So let's uh, share some uh, prayer time together. Church, I uh, strongly encourage you right now to let us know what you want us to be in prayer for. i uh, give you a few moments to start typing those in. Sometimes when you wake up, sometimes the, the beauty of the day just, just hits you in a, in a way that uh, you weren't expecting. And maybe that didn't hit you yesterday. And you're overwhelmed by the, the goodness of God and and, and the amazing uh, work of God that you see around you. And, and you just want to give thanks to God for that. And that's, if that's what's in your heart this morning. We want to hear that praise. Of course, there are other times. Sometimes there are more times when the burdens that we face and the things that are going on around us just really start to take their toll on our spirits and our hearts, and even sometimes on our faith. And if that's something you want to call out, church, we have this time together. That's what we're here to do, to pray for one another to pray with one another, to encourage each other. So as I pray, don't let me have all the fun. You pray as well. Uh, if you're sitting there and you're a lazy boy on the couch, pray out loud uh, with me. Uh, pray through your comments so that it can be sure that everyone who is with us and everyone who's worshiping with us it can be sure to them that they do not face the world alone, that we face life together in the faith that Christ has given to us. Amen, church. All right, so let's praise God. Lord, we thank you because you are good to us and because your love never ends. Thank you, God, for the ways that you care for every single one of us, Lord, by being with us, by giving us your son, by your Holy Spirit's presence that brings calmness and peace and compassion. We thank you, Lord, because you have blessed our lives in so many ways. We thank you because uh, we can't keep track of the ways you bless us. 
All we can do, Lord, is thank you. Because we know you don't bless us because how good we are, but solely because of how good you are. And because you are good, Lord, we worship you. Because of who you are, God, because of what we know about your love and, and what makes you, you, God, we give our hearts to you and we praise you. And this morning, Lord, I'm going to ask with every bit of faith that you've given to me that in your mercy you would hear the prayers of your people this morning. Prayers that are being written in a comment section on a Facebook Live broadcast. Prayers that are being written down in someone's notebook. Prayers, God, that are being voiced as someone watches at home. That you would listen, God, to the prayers that somebody is screaming, screaming in their heart, even in silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear all of these prayers that we bring to you this morning. And as we rest in the peace that you give us, may we find life's true joy. The fact that we are loved by you, the fact that you are with us, and that we are your beloved children. Almighty God, we thank you for who you are, for this day you've blessed us with, for the prayers that you answer, and for the ways, God, that you comfort your people. And all these things we pray and trust in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Yeah, amen. Thanks be to God.
Amen, church. Um, what do we What do we have if we don't have the goodness of God? What really matters if the goodness of God um, hasn't been given to us? Amen. So, church, uh, hear these uh, words from the book of Matthew, chapter twenty parable of Jesus offered to us and I ask that you would hear these words as the voice of God spoken to our heart this morning Jesus says for the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard after agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage he sent them into his vineyard When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon, and about three o'clock, he did the same. About five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now, when the first came, they thought they would receive more but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day in the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. Sisters and brothers, like it or not, believe it or not, this is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. And Lord, we thank you for your word and for the spirit which speaks its truth to us. May we be ready to hear what you have to say to us today. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Yeah, amen. Thanks be to God. So church, I give thanks to God for every single one of you. And as I continue to see Uh, your names and how you're supporting and encouraging each other that brings a a blessing to me because that's a strong part of who we're called to be as the body of Christ too many people feel like they have to do life by themselves too many people worry that there's really no one who wants to be there for them of course we know we have experienced the goodness of God we know first and foremost God wants to be there God is there with every single person who needs his care, with every single person who has breath in their lungs, God is there. But God has also brought the church together. And in that in that unity that God creates, there is a compassion and a care that only God could create. Where it doesn't matter where you come from, it doesn't matter what side of town you're from, what high school you graduated from. It doesn't matter what language you speak. It doesn't matter who you vote for. It doesn't matter what political party you affiliate yourself with. It doesn't matter if you're rich, if you're poor. It doesn't matter if you dress up nice or if you don't have anything to dress up with. When we come together, we are brought together by God's grace. It is God who has called us to be here. 
I know we've been telling you week after week, hey, 1045, we're going to worship. We've been telling you we're going to worship at 1045. Somebody has told you, hey, there's going to be church on Sunday morning. Get ready. I know we've been telling you that, but I need you to understand and appreciate the goodness of God, that it's really been the spirit of God telling you, you need to be there with your church. You need to be a part of the worship of the body of Christ. It's always God's voice reaching out to us first. Don't ever get it twisted. We might think that we made the decision to be here this morning. We might think that we're the good Christian who wants to go to church, and maybe you are good Christians. Praise God. But it's always God reaching out to us first. That's the goodness of God. So in this text we have today, there's a parable that Jesus told, and I've had maybe countless conversations with Christians about this parable. And this is one of the ones that really seems to get people riled up sometimes because as we, as we read the story, there is a sense of unfairness that Jesus is highlighting. You heard the story. You probably, some of you probably heard it many times too. There's a story of a landowner who goes out to the, to the streets and he finds someone to come and work for him early in the morning and he brings them to go work and he he tells them this is what you're going to get paid you're going to get paid a day's wage for your work a few hours pass and he goes out again and he finds another group of people and he tells them here's going to give you a day's wage come and work for me he goes out again and again later and later into the day where finally it's about three o'clock and he goes and finds another group of people and he tells them, come work for me. And at five o'clock, it's time to get everything situated. It's time to clock out and to go home and to get your daily wage. And in order to appreciate what this passage, this parable means to us and what it might have meant to the disciples who heard Jesus speak it, we have to listen to those instructions the instructions that the owner gave because they mirror what Jesus has already told us. He said to pay the last workers first. Can you imagine if you're that last worker that you were hired on at, you know, three o'clock in the afternoon, by the time you get to the job site, it's probably, I don't know, 315, 330, you learn what's going on. About 330-ish, you start getting to work and then all of a sudden, an hour and a half later, choo, choo, the, do they still do that at work by the way I, I don't know um, the, the, the bell goes off and it's time to go home that sounded more like a train anyway forgive me <laughs> but it's time to go home you've been working for an hour and a half oh man I came all the way over all the way over here for this they're probably going to give me a quarter or something but you get the entire day's wage can you imagine what a good day that was to be one of those workers and then you're a part of the next group who was hired not at three, maybe at, you know, I don't know, 145. You're thinking, well, that's still a good day. Not bad. And then you're part of the group who was hired before them. And, you know, you're still thinking, hey, I worked half a day, but I got a whole day's wage. All right. But then as the other groups was getting paid to get to that first group who was hired first thing in the morning. And they're thinking in their mind, well, okay, these guys have gotten a whole day's wage for working half a day, working an hour and a half, working minimum today, what am I going to get? And they get what they agreed to. They get what they expected to get. And it infuriates them. <laughs> It infuriates them because they've watched everybody else. They've been paying attention and they're sure that there's something extra coming to them because they were first. And because they were first, I'm going to suggest to you that there was a feeling in their heart that crept in that kept them from seeing how generous an offer it was that was given to them to begin with. Would you have expected anything different? If you were in the back of the line and you were first hired and you saw everybody else getting this pay, the same pay that you would get, would you expect anything different? Would you have acted differently 
if Jesus was telling the parable and using your name, would he have said, I'm just going to pick somebody, Tracy, would he have said, and Tracy was mad because <laughs> she didn't get more of that money she thought she was going to get. The truth is, most of us might be kind of thinking, well, wait a minute. This is all I got. Church, can you say this with me? Christ is enough. Christ is enough. Now, pay attention. I didn't tell you that all the blessings that Christ gives you is enough. I didn't tell you that all the things you wake up and praise God for every single day, all of those things are enough. Those things are good. Those things are blessings. But sisters and brothers, if we are looking to God because we want the good blessings, what tends to happen when we're not careful, Christ doesn't become enough for us. That we need to have the extra on top of what we expect God to give us. When we need, when we want, when we expect all of the extra, sisters and brothers, Christ is no longer enough for us. And that is dangerous heart territory because if Christ isn't enough what else do we need what else are we going to look for that could be more valuable more honoring to God than Christ himself and part of Christ being enough recognizes just how much grace God gives us Right? Christ is enough because of what Christ did for us. And part, in part, way we express what Christ gave to us was the grace of God. Right? That's why we call it the good news of Jesus. Because in the good news of Jesus Christ, we see the grace of God. We hear the grace of God being proclaimed. We see what it looks like. And we realize that this is what God wanted for us. And it is enough. It is enough. I never have another thing in my life that I could ever call an extra blessing. If I can't say Christ is enough, then I haven't truly known Christ because Christ is enough. Amen. But we forget just how amazing grace is because we start expecting grace to be something more. We desire sometimes for grace to be something more because I think in fact, we, We start taking our eyes off of Christ in the process. Grace is amazing, sisters and brothers. That's what makes this story so troubling. You know, if you're that you're part of that group that was hired last, you are thanking God for what happened today. Can you still thank God if you were part of the first group? We need to be able to say yes. We need to be able to realize that That landowner made the same deal with them, that you come work for me and I'll give you what I'll give you. I'll be generous to you. That has to be enough. But unfortunately, sometimes we get caught up in what we think grace needs to be for us and what grace needs to be for other people. And that's a tricky, that's a tricky line to walk, sisters and brothers. It's dangerous Because when we start defining grace, what grace should be for me, and trying to define what grace should be for other people, we're starting to try to take the place of Christ. We're we're trying to be God ourselves in determining what, what part of grace is good for me and what part of grace is good for you. If a, if a, if grace is amazing, it has to be amazing for all of us. It can't be that I sing amazing grace and I have this great experience of God and I know the goodness of God and praise God. But as soon as it feels like you're experiencing grace, well, wait a minute, you haven't gone through what I've gone through. Wait a minute. You haven't been in church as long as I've been in church. Wait a minute. You haven't done the things I've done. You need to slow your roll. As soon as we start taking on these kinds of mindsets, we start taking away just how amazing grace is. I almost feel like we have to say that if grace is amazing at some point, it should make you a little angry. (laughs) 
Maybe it should make you angry. Maybe it just, should just remind you of the goodness of God. Because we tend to take our eyes off the goodness of God. We want to experience the grace of God and not always are we willing to offer the grace of God. Right in the middle of this parable, there's a part where the landowner has an extended part of a conversation. There's people who are just standing around, Jesus says, and the landowner says, why are you standing here idle all day? And they said to him, because no one has hired us. No one else has reached out to them. No one else has called on them. No one else has gone to where they are. You ever feel like that? You ever feel like you've been left in the middle of nowhere, all alone? Our God reaches out to us, church. Our God is not willing for us to be left alone. And so it's our God who's always reaching out to us, who's always trying to, to, to nudge at our heart just a little bit to make us realize that he's there. And as we realize the presence of God more and more, and as we become willing to hear this good news, we're more able to recognize and experience the goodness of God. How many testimonies do I know that I can I could ask and see uh, and read about here on this um, Actually, this right here, <laughs> this comment thread where saint after saint could talk about the goodness of God and how they've experienced God and how God brought them to faith. I know I could hear story after story. And the church, in part, is a community that has this story of the goodness of God offered to them repeatedly. But it also has to be the place where that grace is given the opportunity to be told repeatedly and repeatedly. Can I step on everybody's toes real quick? A lot of the churches I've served have been comprised mainly of a lot of older generation folks. Praise God. And one of the things I've heard uh, in a lot of the conversations, we talk about ministry, talk about worship, Lord help us, some things, uh, some, one thing that gets repeated you know, from church to church, right? It doesn't matter what part of Texas I've been a part of, how big the church has been. You, you hear this, I've heard this comment just about everywhere. Well, the young people, they just want to be entertained. You ever heard that? And I got to tell you, there's some truth to that. Now, if you're one of those younger people, I mean, just own that and recognize it. Let God deal with it, right? Call it what it is. So we'll say that the, the younger generation, they just want to be entertained. Can we not give the younger people just enough grace to say, okay, that's where you are right now, and that's okay. Now, I'll, I'll talk to some younger people in, in the younger generations, and it comes out, it'll come out. All them old people, <laughs> they just want to be appeased. And you know what? There's some truth to that. But can't we find enough grace to offer to them? For that to be okay too? That as we afford grace to one another, God works in our hearts and in our community in a profound way? To understand, we may have some people who are at the front of the line, who's been there for a long time, but there are other people that are right here. They just got here. But the same grace is given to them in the same kinds of way that it was given to these people at another time. And instead of getting confused, instead of saying, well, that's not fair, instead of they need to do this or they need to do that or they need to stop doing this, instead of saying... Instead of saying all that, could we not say the grace of God is real to me? That means the grace of God is real to us. Let's live in the grace of God together. I will be more graceful with you. And I need you to be more graceful with me. That's what the church is called to be. 
And if we're more graceful with each other, I guarantee you, there wouldn't be as much complaining and bickering. There wouldn't be as much of that kind of stuff that we deal with. If we could just have more grace with each other. Yeah, but if you grace, if you have grace with them, then they might think they can do this. Grace is amazing, remember? And sometimes it's unfair. Of course it's unfair. It's unfair to God. God gave us everything, and yet how do we act? Who do we forget? What are the things we think about? Now we try to skip out on our prayers, we try to skip out on our reading, try to skip out on our giving. Go to church? Nah, I'd rather sleep in, right? God should be the one angry with us because in this grace deal, it's, it's God who gets the, the most, uh, who, who loses the most. No, it's God who has to put up with the most. And since God has loved us and given us his grace over and over, how dare we not be willing to do the same with each other? that easy of course not is it fair no but I want you to uh, appreciate where this parable I think comes from maybe maybe you remember the story of the young rich man who came to Jesus Matthew tells of this story back in chapter 19 it's a rich young man and he comes to Jesus and says teacher what good deed must I do to have eternal life and Jesus tells him what he has to do and he has to sell everything give it to the poor and then come follow me and if you remember the story the man the young rich man leaves away sad because he's got a lot of stuff he has to give away and out of that came a conversation between Jesus and his disciples and I'm not going to go through all of it but as the young man went away Jesus turned to his disciples and said truly I tell you it will be hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. And as the disciples hear this, they say, they say, then who can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals it is impossible, but for God all things are possible. And then watch this. Peter says in reply, look, we have left everything and followed you. What then will we have? I wonder if Peter was thinking and the other disciples were thinking about the extra blessings that they were expecting. That maybe in that moment they had a nudge of doubt that Christ wasn't enough. Not the Christ that was right before them. Not the Christ who called them to live in grace and humility not the Christ who would give up his life in obedience to God. And I think we all have our moments where we may ask the same questions. What then will we have if I'm going to be that graceful to somebody else? You know what you'll have? You'll have the grace of God still. And sisters and brothers, can I say, can you affirm that is And if you want that to be enough for you, if you want that, that feeling that Christ is enough, that you experience the grace of God, if you've never experienced the grace of God, if you want that now, I want you to pray with me. Lord, thank you for this amazing grace that shows us who you are and makes us the new creation you call us to be. Forgive us if we haven't been willing to be graceful with one another or obedient to you. But by the power of your Holy Spirit, give us a new heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Yeah, amen. Thanks be to God. Amen, church. Amen. I was going to tell you about uh, that song, Amazing Grace. You ever heard that song, Amazing Grace? You know what? Here's what I do. Let me let me get through these announcements real quick, uh, and then uh, I'll tell you about Amazing Grace. After the benediction, I'll give you the story of Amazing Grace, so if you want to hang around a little bit longer, uh, you can. Uh, I'll tell you what I was thinking, and 
Um, we'll go from there. Uh, next Sunday, what do you do? Uh, I love Little Joe. The Ballad of Little Joe is my favorite Veggie Tales. Uh, and I, all the old school Veggie Tales. There's new Veggie Tales, and okay, that's fine. They're great, but not as great as the old school Veggie Tales. And anyway, some of our younger Kelsey kids don't know about these old school Veggie Tales, and so I want to watch uh, my favorite episode of Veggie Tales with them and with you. This is a Kelsey Kids event, but you know it'd be kind of great if the entire church could be there that we can learn and watch together instead of just saying, well, you kids, you go over there and do your thing and we'll do our thing over here if we ever get to our thing. Uh, but this is a chance that maybe we can learn and, and learn about the Bible and learn about our faith together. So next week at 3 p.m. on Zoom, we'll watch that. If you're interested, let us know so we can give you the information so that you can log in. All you do is push a button and uh, we'll, we'll be able to, to do that together. I think that's all I want to tell you. Um, make sure to uh, go to our, our mobile app website, www.wearekelsey.info. And there, I say it every week, you can look at our, uh, you can read our daily um, text message, wearekelsey.info. Uh, you can also listen and read or read our daily devotional, but you can also give your, your, your giving as well. There's a giving link. You click on it, fill out your information. You can automate your giving, which is a very helpful thing for us as well. Uh, so your tithes and your offerings or your special gifts can go through there. You don't have to be uh, in the sanctuary. Uh, you can use that gift. It's pretty easy. Uh, some of you are still coming by the office to leave your gifts and, and offerings. We give thanks to God to that as well. So church, I'm going to offer you a benediction um, to remind you of the goodness of God and to set you on your way and uh, ask God to bless us that uh, as we as we have worshiped and as we continue to worship and rest today, this Sabbath of ours, that the goodness of God would dwell in our hearts. Amen. So receive this benediction. May God Almighty, who is good, whose love is sure and steadfast, bring you peace today and this week as you go to the places he wants you to go, to be his presence and to share his amazing grace. May all glory be his. Go now in peace in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. So, church is over. <laughs> Amen. So, I don't have my thing yet. I, I was going to order one and be like, cut. So, if you got to leave, if you know you got something on the, on the stove or in the oven, then that's fine. You can go check it. It's okay. So just pretend everybody's walking out right now. We're walking out of the church. We're shaking. We're not shaking hands because social distance and cooties and everything. But you know, we're talking to each other. We're, we're giving thanks to each other. We're, we're talking about what an amazing sermon we just heard. Amen. So yeah. So pretend we're outside. We're all gathered and we're all got our mask on and everything. So here's the story. I tell you, we all know the song "Amazing Grace," and I'm sure some of you maybe you saw the movie. You know the story behind it. Um, it's a great story. Powerful story, right? A, a man who was once a part of the slave trade, you know, as a slave uh, owner, you know, riding the boats and, and everything. Yes, Zoom at 3 o'clock, Kelsey Kids. Cowboys are playing. You know how I feel about that. Cowboys. 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 <laughs> uh, so anyway, let's see. I didn't get to see everybody. So, um, so yeah, you know, the story of of John Newton, former slave trader, and he comes to faith. He his his actual he had some experiences early on, if I remember, that kind of made him think about faith. But you know, he would think about faith, but then he would he would kind of turn to his old ways. Amen. That'll preach. Um, but of course, has this uh, conversion, and I think it was part of there was a seemed like there was a storm or something. He was on one of the ships, and there was a storm, um, and bec and it felt like the the boat was gonna you know. You capsize or whatever, you lose your life, whatever. Anyway, so he he converted then. That'll do it, right? And, and even then, it wasn't instant. I think there was some some growth. But anyway, he wrote the songs, the the words to Amazing Grace. I don't know if he actually wrote wrote the song. It was he was a poem writer, so he was a poet. So he would write these uh, lines of poetry, and the, the 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 poem eventually got connected to a, a particular tune. As I understand it, uh, for a long time, which wouldn't be, I guess out of the ordinary you know it was sung to different tunes right you can sing can't you sing, wait is it amazing grace that you can sing to like all of like you can sing amazing grace to gilligan's island right 
Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now if I found, was was blind, but now I see. Right, and you can do that with a lot of different songs. Um, uh, so anyway, he he wrote the the poem. I don't remember if he called it Amazing Grace, but what we call Amazing Grace. And not everybody liked it. <laughs> not all the church people thought it was a nice hymn. Can you imagine that? And so you know there are people who are like, eh, hymn, whatever. Anyway. The hymn starts to get used in like revival meetings, right? And there were church people who didn't like that at all either, these revival meetings. And out of these revival meetings, um, this song gets widely used. It becomes very popular. And so people are singing it, and they're singing it more or less to the tune that we know. Um, and, and as people sing it more, there are other verses that get added. Right, or other words that get used, but one verse in particular, and I called it up because I didn't, I wasn't sure if I wanted to make it a part of the sermon or not, and I didn't just because I don't know why. Because sometimes I'm like that. <laughs> Wait, wrong one. Sorry, that should be here. Hey, what about me, Mella? You miss me? So wait a minute, Minerva. When you say it's enough, do you mean like me? Like yeah, enough? Or <laughs> um, anyway, so the the song "Amazing Grace," that line that we we remember, we're after church, so I'm not like worried about agenda or anything. So if you got to go, I understand. If you got to go, watch that team. <sighs> Hope they lose. <laughs> oh, I just lost everybody after that. Amen. Anyway. Uh, the the line um, when we've been there ten thousand years right when we've been there ten thousand years bright shining as the sun we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun that that John Newton didn't write that that presumably uh, quite possibly that verse came out of this revival experience that people were having and people were using this song and just just a great reminder. <laughs> All right, Mella. Just a reminder. Uh, hey, yes, Tracy, thank you. You know, we can still, you don't have to listen to me. Talk to each other, right? Um, ask how each other's doing. Um, send send emojis. Send emojis to each other. Ay, Dios mío. Este pastor, ya. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. So the song is getting widely used. People are singing the words of John Newton. But then there's a point where somebody writes their own verse. And you and I don't even realize it, right? You and I probably thought John Newton wrote those words. The slave trader, that the ex-slave trader turned Christian who, who spoke out against uh, owning slaves. And, you know, it's funny. He, he didn't use a religious platform to do that, um, in part maybe because he knew that there would be Christians who would oppose what he was doing. He used a different approach, which that's 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 something else to talk about later, maybe. Um, but we might have thought John Newton wrote those words, but somebody else did. Somebody else who came, experienced the grace of God, who 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 who, who learned the goodness of God. Right, that's the song we were singing. and added their contribution to the faith. And I think when we have grace enough to, to give each other grace, to quote unquote, no, actually, I, no, I'm not gonna say that. Not put up with each other, but to afford grace to one another. God doesn't put up with us. God loves us and gives us grace. And so as people of God, as people who follow Jesus, we do the same. We don't put up with each other. We love each other, and we afford grace to one another. And if we could do that more and more, I, th I think we get to see someone new coming in and, and giving their contribution to the faith, showing, showing what God has done for them, and, and that becomes a part of our new story. Right Again, John Newton didn't write those words that we sing. 
when we've been there 10,000 years. Somebody else who came along and had an experience of God wrote those. And those words then became a part of our experience. We need more grace. Amen. I can do both. Amen, Tracy. Amen. Tell you what, maybe I'm, I think I'm going to hang around here. It looks like everybody's still here. Praise God. Just a bilingual moment. What? If the shoe fits. <laughs> Amen. That's right. I'm going to focus on what Mela told me. Amen. <laughs> um, if we just afford more grace to each other. Uh, I think our churches could be different. I think our ministries would be different. Um, I think we would see I think we'd see a we'd see movements of God that maybe we haven't seen in a long time or maybe even that we've never seen. Because you have to think about what what did grace do for your life? I don't mean grace modest. Grace modest does a lot for us. I'm not talking about grace. <laughs> What has the grace of God done for us? Think about how powerful that is. It makes us who we gain. It makes us who we gain. I just saw pregame is starting. All right, Minerva. I'll take the under from the Cowboys. <laughs> I always want them to be negative anyway. Negative four, seven. So enjoy the game. Got to be with you. Um, what was I saying? We just think about how the, the grace of God has impacted our life, made us who we are, truly gives us our purpose. Uh, it's that sort of foundation that we always go back to. And if we can make grace, the, the grace of God, part of our, our foundation today as we live and as we minister with, um, I don't know, I just think that'd be monumental. We've, we would see the grace of God in ways that we can't experience otherwise. Amen. Let us know, Mary. God's grace. Hashtag God's grace. Hashtag we are Kelsey. Amen. Amen. We are Kelsey. We are Kelsey. Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. How about this? Uh, can I? Uh, uh, I won't even try to compete with the Cowboys because I know how it is. Oh, I won't even tell you. I won't even go there. Anyway, how about this? We'll go ahead and finish uh, broadcast. I smell lunch. Praise God. I don't know if it's ready or not, but I smell it. So uh, we'll finish this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play that song that we heard a while ago. Um, the goodness of God. As, as I was singing that with them, as I, I was saying that words, um, uh, all my life you have been faithful. You have been so so good. As I as I as I as I sang those words, let's do a Bible study right now. That's what I'm talking about. As I sang those words, uh, just kind of, I had tears in my eyes. This is just kind of in a flash. All my life, I start thinking about different points. Like all my life, God has been good, even when I haven't been. Right. <laughs> I'm just here. <laughs> you and me both, Sister Gina. I know that's right. Just, but, but anyway, as I, as I sang that song, all my life, you have been so, so good. Just think about, you know, we our family, we just celebrated a birthday. I remember the, the way I felt, you know, my children are born. I remember how I, how I felt like, you know, different points in our marriage. I know uh, how I felt like different points of, of, of even in my, my ministry, the God gave me and even just so many other different ways God's been so good and as I sang those words I was kind of overwhelmed um, anyway I don't know why I told you that why did it was I saying something before that if so I forgot so y'all y'all need to help me uh, talk about that book title I'm not a very good um, personal advertiser Ad, ad advertiser and like when you when you when you self print these books they tell you oh you know you got to get a team and yeah, blah 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 and you got to post here and there man I'm not, I'm not gonna do that you know I, I did it you know let y'all know that friends know that I did it it was kind of something 
just wanted to see what it's like. I'm, I'll probably do another one soon. But I'm not the guy you see. I'm not the man. These pastors that you know are all over social media. Buy my new book and blah blah. blah. Oh, I'm not that guy. So y'all have to do that for me. <laughs> um, let me read it from here. Hey, Amen. Well, we love you too, brother Emilio. We've been praying for you every day. Uh, you know when we get together in Bible study Wednesday night. You know before we were done, we pray. We, we called your name out then. On Saturday morning when we did our prayer, uh, we, we were praying for you as well, brother. So you know you got a church that loves you and is thinking about you and uh, wants you to get well soon. Amen, church. Who's still here? T tells me 27 people are here. Hey, since I have you here as well, let me do something real quick. We, uh, our email, we send out an email. Our church sends out an email once a week. And I think it's pretty good it, you know, it'd take you about a minute to read. Uh, but what I try to do is send uh, useful, not just information. There's some information every once in a while, but useful tools uh, that uh, that are related to our ministry, related to our faith. Sometimes it may be like personal, like, like learning how to pray maybe, right? Or even, I'm not sure, I, as I'm trying to type in a username and password, I can't think of what I want to say. But anyway... I try not to make it just, you know, here's what's happening at our church because there's other ways to do that. Um, so that said, I really want you all to sign up for our church's weekly email. I'm going to give you the link right now to do so. I think you'll appreciate it. I usually send it out um, Monday, excuse me, Thursday morning. And uh, some, yeah, like I said, sometimes there's... You know, there's, uh, where's it at? Oh, here it is. There's information, like don't forget, like maybe this week, uh, I'll probably do a reminder about VeggieTales. VeggieTales, VeggieTales. I'm finding the link, don't lose me. Um, right, And but more, more often than not, way more often than not, I think um, I try to give you tools, right? Maybe it's a, I can't even think of an example right now. If, if you've read them, if you read some of those emails and, and um, you've, you've seen some of those tools, you, you can tell everybody else. So if you follow that link right there that we just put up, uh, you'll be signed up. It's free, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. We don't use your info for anything else other than <laughs> send you a weekly email. And the line I used to live out, I uh, used to use a lot is, you know, the, there, there are a billion emails that get sent out every day. Aren't you glad we only send one? Now, don't put your emails up here in public because not because anybody's here is watching. Just that's not a very good thing to do. So Lizette, I just saw yours. I'm going to hide it. But go ahead and click on that link later on and, and fill it in. And then that way um, uh, you can start getting those this week. Um, what else? We didn't even talk about the Philippian verse. John, you're talking about... Uh, talking about uh, Bible study I mean we, we didn't even talk about it. that's a powerful line that Paul gave us for to me living is Christ right living is Christ and dying is gain whoa Paul had this uh, I don't know inner battle right at some point, he's like, you know what? I'm done. I'd rather just be with Jesus. It's easier. These, these people are always trying to put me in jail and these church people fighting. They just get on my nerves. You know what? Lord, take me now. Right? Elizabeth, Elizabeth, I'm coming home to you. So, but Paul says, you know, if, if I go to be with the Lord, then I can't be with you. And he's talking to the Philippian church, right? And, you know, how, that's, that's in a way, that's, that's grace, right? Um, and nobody wants to die, I don't think, but we want to be with Jesus. But if I'm saying, God, I, I want to be with your people while I can, that's that's pretty amazing too, right? Um, you know, we live in a world where, well, anyway, I don't want to say that. Just how, how powerful of a connection God creates that we it's like we have to jump into it right there's this connection that god creates 
the power of the Holy Spirit that God works. There's this uh, unity that God forms because of all the things we believe and know about Jesus. And, you know, outside, we can't be a part of that. We, we, don't, we don't feel it. We, you know, we have to actually get in and we become a part of it, right? So, so many, too many times as a church, you know, this fellowship, this unity that God creates, we try to be a part of it out here. We try to be a part of it outside, and we can't do that. There's no way we can be a part of that goodness like that if we're trying to do it from out here on our own terms, right, or in our own way. We have to be willing just to, to get in, and then we become a part of it like that. And too many times the church, in particular, you know, the, you know us as Western, the Western church here in the U.S., we just we want to do things our way, on our terms, um, and we want to do them, like, for me, in my own time. And that's not God's design of the church at all, at all. Um, to be a part of God's church, you, you, gotta, you gotta get all in, right? That's how you experience, that's how you become those things that God wants us to get. You know, if, if you're trying to, if you're trying to, um, you know, have those things outside of the fellowship, what Paul is saying here would make complete, would be complete nonsense to you, right? that you would want to give up the glory of heaven just so that you could help somebody else know Christ more. But be, because Paul was so involved in this, he had seen it, had experienced it. Um, I mean, think about Paul, right? One day he's the one breeding murderous threats to Christians, right? Going out with his decrees and everything else. He has this experience with God. And then the very next day, he's being received by the church. Right? Can you think about uh, who's it? Is it Ananias, right? God says, hey, Paul's going to come to you. And he's like, wait a minute. I know Paul. I know what he's been doing. But what was God doing? God was creating the fellowship and unity that God creates. Couldn't tell if somebody's knocking or not. And if Ananias wasn't willing to say, Paul, here it is. You're a part of that now. I mean, faith would be so different. But because Ananias was a part of that, he understood it. Even though he knew everything about who Paul was, he, Paul, this is God's doing. So Paul becomes a part of that. From one day to the next, he's, he's threatening the church, imprisoning the church, maybe, maybe, and killing the church. And the next day, he's being welcomed by the church as a brother in faith. That's grace, y'all. You know, we talk about those people who are sitting idly, no one's gone to them. Right? I don't want to do I don't want to do two sermons in one day, but I will if I have to. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Francis says Paul is an amazing example of God's grace. Yeah, you know what? For me, Paul is the reason I can never give up on somebody. I feel like if if God was able and willing to to touch Paul, to use Paul the way he did, who am I to give up on anybody else? Why? Because maybe they said something bad about Jesus one time. Paul was out like killing people or imprisoning them because of what they believed about Jesus, right? Uh, how can I, how can I not give grace to someone, what, just because they've done bad stuff in their life? It's nonsense. Or, or, or even, you know, okay, we'll accept you, but you have to do this and you have to do that. That's not grace then, man. Grace has to be amazing. Yes, amen, 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 and amen. I Obviously, in, in Scripture, I can't remember the verse off the top of my head. It says, when we read in English, amen and amen. I can never say that. Uh, for me, it's always been amen, yeah, amen. I think we've said that um, um, he waited on me. Yes, like, that's the point, right? Like, God did this for us. How in the world could we not be willing to do it for other people? Right? Um, now, the thing is, that's, that's good in, in, in theory, right? That's good. And, and that's good on Sunday morning when you're hanging around with the preacher on Facebook after church. <laughs> but when those people are brought, right, when you're in that line, and you're getting ready to to get the 
the the day's wage, right? And you see something else that's happening in somebody else's life. That's those are those moments where you know we, we find out what we believe. <laughs> Amen. I'm trying. I'm trying. Preach, preach up. All right, so what else? Oh, real quick. Here's uh, verse 27 of Philippians 1. So, again, Paul's like, oh, these people, I, you know, I want to go see Jesus, but you don't want to be here with them. And then Paul says, look, since I, I want to be here with you, I'm trying to show you the way. Here's what he says in verse 27. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Right? That's, that's, our, that's our part of this right here. Live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Yeah, but nobody's perfect. Oh, that's such a pet peeve. Uh, you, you guys know I, I write a daily devotion. You guys even know that <laughs> I printed some, right? The one I wrote, I think, on Thursday or Friday, I had a whole section that I, actually, I got it out because I found out I just, it didn't belong. But nobody's perfect is one of my pet peeves. Oh, my gosh. I just, because I feel like, when we're not careful, we use it as an excuse. We use it as a crutch that doesn't need to be there. And we use it as a way to ignore, deny, or maybe just stay away from this, this work of God that he's doing in our hearts or wants to do in our hearts. You know, that makes sense? Um, right? So we hear... We hear something about, you know, loving our enemies. Oh, I try, but nobody's perfect. Don't say that. Instead, say, I'm having a hard time doing that right now. And uh, fellowship, I need y'all to pray for me. I got an enemy who is speaking against me, who said, who's done things that uh, are not okay. Um, and Jesus tells me to forgive him, but I'm having a hard time with that. Instead of saying, nobody's perfect. It's almost like throw our hands up in the air. Oh, well, you know, I tried. No big deal. Instead of saying that, say, I'm having a hard time with this. Church, you need to pray for me. Uh, God, you need to show me how to do this. You need to give me the strength and uh, the courage to do this as well. Right? Live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel. So I have an idea. Oh, man, it's a new ministry, right? So uh, I could get a contract with the NFL right, or any of the other major sports uh leagues and so we could broadcast their games right so we could who, who are the eagles playing today i don't even know so we could broadcast the eagles game and instead of listening to the commentators yeah i'll just we'll just do this we'll have bible study and football right a am i on to something here i think i am somebody give me roger goodell's phone number pronto <laughs> Amen. Uh, the only, uh, when it comes to watching sports, the only league, only sport I watch with the commentators, like on purpose, is baseball. There's there's a lot about baseball that I still don't know. A lot of sort of details and even rules, rules stuff like that. That the commentators actually help me. Otherwise, basketball and football, um, I'd rather just watch it myself, right? Um, I guess if I were to watch soccer, I would need the commentators because I don't know nothing about soccer. All I know about soccer is that too much running for me, y'all. <laughs> All right, what else? Oh, yes. last Maybe this is the last thing I'll, I'll touch on and then we'll be out of here. Uh, Paul gives the encouragement to... To not be intimidated by your opponent, opponents, those who speak against the faith that you have in Jesus. You know, you could say Christ is enough, um, and there are people who say, yeah, but, no, no, no. Be intimid intimidated by that. Christ has to be enough. If Christ is not enough, then what was the cross for? What does all this mean, right? For, for them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. If you can be confident in, in that Christ is enough, that's, a, that's an assurance of your salvation. Now watch this. Don't think, you know, you, oh, you learned something. Or I can't think, oh, I really taught them something great because I'm such a great preacher. No, no, no. Watch this. And this is God's doing. It is always God's doing. Let's not ever forget that. For he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ. Faith is a gift. 
God has given us that that faith as a gift from him. Not, but now watch this. Not only do we get faith as a gift from God, but of suffering for him as well. I think I'm going to close the book because I don't think we want to talk about suffering, do we? That's one of them subjects like, nah, I'd rather not do that. All right, friends. I think I'm going to get out of here just because I'm going to be with my family. Um, just because just because uh, before, I'm, uh, before I do that I'm going to go out with that song that we heard uh, the goodness of God and, and maybe you know maybe you hadn't heard that song before when you're done maybe go google it and listen to it again and as you do just think about the goodness of God maybe that's a project we can do together you know we think about the goodness of God all my life you have been faithful maybe write a story maybe write an experience that you'd be willing to share. Talk about a moment where the goodness of God was so important to you, so overwhelmingly evident to you that you could share with the church as a testimony. So, sisters and brothers, God be with you. This is a day of rest and a day of worship. I hope you'll take God up on the promise of the rest that he gives. And uh, have a great rest of the day, and let's go out by singing together this song once again. Cool.